So my research is about machine learning techniques in clinical neuroimaging. So we are analyzing structural MRI data of patients, of human subjects, and try to diagnose neurological or psychiatric diseases or make general conclusions about disease progression or treatment outcome in these subjects. Computational neuroscience uh, connects two very fascinating fields. So on the one hand, we have neuroscience, which is about brain research. So how does the brain work? Um, how do we perceive the world? How do we think? And it's also about changes, what changes in the brain when we get diagnosed with a certain disease. So this is very fascinating for itself. And on the other hand, we have computer science and mathematics and very powerful m methods to uh, extract information from very complex data and I think what me mostly fascinates is the connection of both so that we can use those advanced algorithms to analyze the brain. Um, if you have a brain image for instance, so it's a very large image and there we have experts for reading those images, but it's really difficult to extract certain information out of it. For example, you have a brain of someone who is relatively old, maybe 80 years old, and then you look at it and you can't really tell is there atrophy which is coming from Alzheimer's disease or is this just normal atrophy. And those algorithms are very powerful in um, capturing also subtle differences in those data. So we have those brain images and these are three-dimensional images with a lot of, you have one value for each voxel and this is mostly about the structure, so about the, um, so we have gray matter and we have white matter and on the other hand we have for example uh, very powerful machine learning techniques for instance convolutional neural networks which are a part of deep learning and these convolutional neural networks are everywhere applied where we analyze images so it's also about image recognition and it has been shown to be very successful in many medical imaging applications for example identifying cancer and different kinds of images or lesion segmentation and we use these uh, convolutional neural networks for analyzing structural MRI data with respect to neurological and psychiatric diseases. So we give the um, MR images of patients and have the controls to the computer, train our networks to identify differences between those, and then use this trained network for predicting the label or the diagnosis or the symptom severity for totally new subjects. And so this is also about precision me medicine. So try to find the right diagnosis for a certain subject or the best treatment or symptom severity. And the whole framework is very um, flexible. So you can answer very different questions, but you need a lot of data and good data um, to answer those questions. We mostly work with open data sets. So for example, there's the ETNI database, so this is an Alzheimer database, so here we have images of a couple of thousands of subjects, elderly controls and patients with Alzheimer's disease. And this is a database a lot of people are using and therefore a lot of different machine learning techniques have already been applied to this database. And this is very, this is a very good because this means this data is used and there's progress with the machine learning techniques. Um, another database we are using is the UK Biobank, so here we have a large cohort of subjects, so we have uh, MR images of almost 15,000 um, subjects, and, but this is a cohort study, study, so we don't have many cases per disease, so we have maybe 30 patients with MS, uh, some with Alzheimer's disease, 100 with depression and so on, so it's not so useful to, for making di disease diagnosis. But it's generally very interesting to have such a large database for training some models, also for age prediction and sex prediction. And um, besides these open databases, we also have clinical collaborations, mostly here within Charité, so for example with Professor Friedemann, Friedemann Paul regarding multiple sclerosis and Professor Schlagenhauf regarding schizophrenia. We're also setting up cooperations also with other hospitals. But this is a, a huge amount of work to get mm. interesting data. 
I would just focus on uh, neuroimaging data. So uh, therefore we need diseases where we see changes on those neuroimaging data and we mostly see changes in neurological diseases. So for example, Alzheimer's disease. So here the brain shrinks, so you have a lot of atrophy and the brain gets smaller, which is, um, which is also normal during aging, but uh, in Alzheimer's disease it's accelerated. And uh, so this is the largest field where deep learning ap approaches are applied to. And another topic I'm working is multiple sclerosis. So multiple sclerosis is considered to be an autoimmune disease characterized by lesions in the brain, which uh, lead to uh, very different symptoms such as pain and mood problems, motor problems, problems in vision and so on. Um, but it's very important to keep in mind that those lesions are not specific for patients with MS, but also how the controls have lesions. And we were interested to see what convolutional neural networks find interesting in this data. And we are also working a bit on Parkinson's disease, but here it's um, more difficult to see changes in the brain. And we're also working on psychiatric diseases, um, but here the changes are known to be more subtle. So here's always the question, can we really see a difference in the structure between patients with depression and no depression? So there are some studies that provide relative good accuracies, mostly in small sample size studies and larger sample size studies. Usually the accuracy drops, but it's still an uh, active area of research how far we can get here. But here for uh, psychiatric diseases, it's also very interesting to go more into functional MRI data. So um, how are we perceiving certain images and is here a difference between patient with depression and healthy controls, for example. Since the machine learning framework is relatively flexible, you can use whatever you want as labels and you can also use unsupervised machine learning algorithms and try to find clusters in the data. Um, this all really depends on the data you have. And if you have a large enough database where you have enough different kind of subtypes, then you can use those machine learning algorithms to find those subtypes. So for example, there's a study in depression which found different subtypes. For example, some are more related to rumination, others more for unhaded hedonia. And, um, this might be very interesting and what we are analyzing we are mostly using uh, Alzheimer's disease and we also try to find subtypes within Alzheimer's disease so we know that usually the um, disease starts with the hippocampus so there is some loss in the data and then it spreads over the brain but we also found that some uh, subjects are more characterized for example by cortical atrophy than others and here it's also um, a very interesting approach. Um, since 2008, we were working on machine learning techniques and clinical neuroimaging, and we first started with standard machine learning techniques, for example, support vector machines. And here, the main task was on identifying disease relevant features in the data. So, this could, for example, be the hippocampal volume in Alzheimer's disease. We know this is the biomarker in Alzheimer's disease, and therefore, we use this marker and then use um, a classifier to differentiate between normal controls and uh, patients with Alzheimer's disease. And in the last years we more and more focused on deep learning approaches and here the idea is that we do not a sophisticated feature extraction but we use more or less the raw data, give them to a neural network and this neural network finds out by itself what's relevant in the data and then tries to, good, to train a good classifier. And what's very interesting about it is that those convolutional neural networks are completely naive about our clinical knowledge, which we know what's in, important in those images. So for example, those uh, networks don't know that the hippocampal volume is important or that lesions are important in MS patients. And we wanted to see if those algorithms are capturing this information and we found that they do and this is a whole field of explainable artificial intelligence because those neural networks are very complex so we have very many parameters to train and it's it's not really a black box because we know what the weights are on the parameters 
um, but it's um, difficult to understand it from from a human perspective so it's not so you don't get really some concepts and uh, different machine learning approaches have been developed here to shed light on on how the machine is working and we focused here on so-called heat maps which give you an impression on the input data so the MR images you feed in which tell you which voxel was relevant for the final classification decision so it does not really tell you what's happening within the neural network and what is each of the filter learning but tells you yes for making the alzheimer's diagnosis especially the area around the hippocampus was important and this is was something which is very important for us that we know okay so the cnn is also focusing on hippocampal volume so this is also a way to validate our um, convolutional neural network models and we did a similar study in multiple sclerosis, and this was about does the neural network focus on the lesions in the brain, because it does not know that the lesions are important, and we found that the neural network indeed does focus on the lesions, but we also found that it focuses on the location of the lesions. So posterior lesions were considered to be much more important to make an MS diagnosis than frontal lesions, and this was very interesting for us. The MS study was a, like a proof of concept study that the network finds something useful in the data. Uh, but of course, this is not yet a clinically relevant cl question. And we have a new project where the task is to predict disease activity in patients with MS at baseline. And this is a very complex clinical question. And it's also very difficult to get enough and good data here. So we don't have large databases for MS, which we can use for training our models. So we, we have here collaboration with Professor Friedemann Powell, who has a really nice data set. And we are also setting up collaborations to other hospitals to get more and more data and to try to develop something which is really clinically useful someday.